Today I'm going to show you how we turned this boring kids closet into this. And even better, I'm going to show you how you can create the custom closet of your dreams at a fraction of the cost. I promise this project is a lot more approachable than it may seem, and in fact, it can be done with very few tools. So come along and I'll show you how we made this happen. This isn't my first time creating custom closets in our home. In our master bedroom, I created a custom closet for my husband and another one for myself. My favorite thing about these closets are the drawers. I absolutely love not having a dresser. So I knew when I created a closet for my children, I wanted to do the same thing, only find a way to make it even easier. So the first thing that I do when I go to create something like a closet is to sketch it on paper. After I've gone through a few renditions, I'll put it into SketchUp. That not only helps me see the design and get a better idea of the proportions, but I can then take those exact measurements and estimate my lumber usage so I don't end up with a lot of overage. After that, the first step is demo. Take everything up out of the closet. Remove the rod, the shelf, anything that's attached to the wall. It all has to come out. So how do you make this project simple and affordable? Use an existing dresser. I picked this one up on Craigslist for $30. If you're looking for a dresser for a project like this, you're going to want something as square as you can get it so it will look like it was built in. Begin by removing any decorative finishes and then cut off the feet so that the dresser body will sit down against the base of the closet. You'll then want to paint the dresser and in my case, I was able to use the top of the dresser as the front face of the drawer that will be under the reading nook. So you'll see that one come up again later. My preference is to use melamine coated plywood in constructing custom closets. MDF is also another perfectly acceptable solution. I just like the strength and durability that the melamine offers. It is, however, exceptionally heavy, so I find it useful to have it cut while at Lowe's or Home Depot, wherever you're shopping. I had mine cut into 16 inch widths. That also allows me to start with a bunch of panels that are already at the correct width and all I have to do from there is use my circular saw to cut them to length. You'll want to use a straight edge when cutting your project panels to length with the circular saw. For this I used Craig Tools AccuCut and I really can't say enough about it. It helped me make these cuts quickly and accurately. We fit the base frame piece in snug. That allowed us to see where the closet was slightly out of square and where we were going to make some adjustments. After that, we fit in the side pieces and attached them to the wall with a brad nailer. The dresser is the next part to go in. So much of this closet is fit around this dresser, so it's essential that that piece goes in next. I recommend marking rather than measuring to make sure that all of your lines are dead on where you want them to be. Now for this closet, we chose to create grooves where the different shelves and things would fit together. If you don't have a router, you absolutely do not have to do this step. You could use nails, uh, you could screw, or you could use uh, brace pieces to hold up the shelving. If you do choose to create grooves, run your router along a straight edge in our case, I didn't have the right size bit and the store was closed, so I ran it through twice. Next, we fitted the shelf that sits on top of the dresser, again, marking rather than measuring, and slotted it into the groove that we created in that wall piece. We then added the frame that sits on the right side of the dresser, attaching it to the dresser and joined the two with a top piece that is nailed down from the top. The next step is to create the bench for the reading nook. 
Now it's important to remember when creating custom closets that the closet opening is smaller than the closet itself. So you'll have some dead space at the sides. In our case, we have about 14 inches of non-usable space. The rest of that is for a pull-out drawer for the kids' shoes. So for this part, I simply used some scrap 2x4s and pocket hold them together to create a sturdy frame. You'll notice that the 2x4s in this frame are turned on to their side, which is a little bit unusual. This is both so that we'd have the room that we needed and so that there would be room for drawer slides to attach between the 2x4s. For the top, I simply used some scrap oak wood that I had lying in the garage, pocket hold together, and created the bench top. For the wallpaper, we chose to go with New Wallpapers, the forest pattern. Be sure when you're cutting these to length that the patterns match, so one section might need to be a little bit longer than the other in order to form a continuous pattern. This design actually utilizes two different wallpaper designs, and so for the second one, we went with Tibetan grass cloth, also made by New Wallpaper. This one was a little bit trickier to get to line up, but we love how it turned out. About this same time, I went ahead and attached the hardware to the drawers. For this, I used Craig Jig's hardware jig, which made attaching both the pole and the knobs really simple. New wallpaper is a removable peel and stick wallpaper, which is great if you're in a rental, if you want to change your mind, or in our case, if you simply just really love the designs. It is a little trickier to adhere if you have texturing, so you'll notice that we knocked it down a little bit. That's not necessary, but we found it helpful. I mentioned earlier that you might find that your walls are a little bit out of square. In our case, this house has actually physically been moved before, so it is a little more out of square than the usual. So we had some gaps behind the framework and the wall, and I will come back to how we address that in just a moment. I completed the reading nook bench by screwing on the face, attaching the drawer face, nailing the bench top with my Real B Brad nailer, and then finishing with some flat varnish. I addressed those gaps between the framework and the back wall by using quarter round, and I actually really like how it looks. That's all there is to it. Now you can add some baskets for some books, some pillows, a light. That drawer has tons of storage for shoes, and that dresser, doesn't it look like it's built in? I absolutely love how this closet came together, and more importantly, my children do too. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it's given you the courage to tackle the next DIY project. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find the full tutorial on my website at www.thecreatedhome.com as well as other tutorials and DIY projects. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Created Home.